Today we'll look at how to create a halftone mask for your image in Affinity Photo. You can start with an image like this and turn it into this. I'm in Affinity Photo and I have this image of a woman here. I'm going to create a color background just so it's a little easier to see our transparency. So I'll select Layer, New Fill Layer, I'll drag it to the bottom, and let's just make it some type of blue. Now the effect we want is to make a halftone and use it as a mask on this image. So let's first try the obvious way. I'll select the woman layer here, and we create a halftone by using a live filter. So I'll click Live Filters here, and then I'll click Halftone. Now there are various settings here. You can experiment with them as you like, so I'll just close this. Now if you know how masks work, the first thing you might try is dragging the filter onto the thumbnail here. So I'll drag it up, and nothing really changes. So that approach won't work. Let me delete this. Let's try another method. I'll create a pixel layer. Let's just fill it with a gradient gray. I'll add a halftone filter to it. So now I have this halftone created up here. Let's try to drag the pixel layer into the mask area. So I'll take the pixel layer, I'll click and drag it, and still nothing really happens. So that's enough of what doesn't work. Let me show you what actually does work. Now the key to finding a solution is to understand how live filters and other dynamic effects work on a mask. When we try to use something like a halftone filter on a mask, the mask reacts to the level of transparency, not the level of black and white as it usually does. So what this means is we need to convert our halftone pattern from black and white to a solid color and a layer of transparency. Let me delete what I have so far. And let's hide the person for now. So let's create a gradient rectangle here. I'll make it black and white here. Let's add a halftone to it. We can modify this later so our decisions don't matter too much. I'll close this. Now one thing you may notice is this edge here. That seems to happen when you do halftones on shapes. We can crop that out later. Now the key to converting this from black and white to say black and transparent is to use blend options. I have a detailed video on how blend options work. I'll put a link down in the description below. So here I'm gonna take my rectangle and I'm gonna put it in a group. I can press Control G for that. So far nothing really looks different. But now with my group selected, I'm going to click this gear icon up here that says blend options. So let's click that. And now we have this interface here. We're just gonna focus on the left side for this video. What it lets us do is adjust transparency based on whether something is light or dark. So the left side is the dark side. If I turn down the value here, you can see our blacks become transparent. Basically they have zero opacity now. I can bring it back up to 100% opacity. The right side are the bright areas. So if I bring down the white, the white has 0% transparency now, and we can see through it. So this is why by default, when the sliders appear, you can see it's fully solid. And if I drag both sides down, everything is fully transparent. But what I wanna do right now is make the whites transparent. So let's just drag those down. And we've achieved our desired effect. So I'll close this. So now the output of this group is layers of transparency here between black and fully transparent. And I'll turn my person layer back on. And I'll take my group and I'll drag it over the person's thumbnail and I'll let go. And now you can see we're getting the result we want. The black is the solid area and the white is transparent. Now the great thing about this method is that our halftone is still fully editable. We can control the gradient on the rectangle here. So with the rectangle selected, I can click the gradient tool and I can change how it looks. I think radial gradient would be best here. So I'll select radial. And it's kind of the opposite we want right now. I want the black to be in the middle. So let's reverse that. I'll click reverse. And here we're starting to get the look we want. Now you can see what's happening on the edges like I mentioned before. To get rid of that, I'm just gonna take my rectangle and I'm just gonna expand it past the edge of my photograph here. And that will mostly hide that glitch. We can also adjust our halftone. So I'll click on the halftone and we can adjust the size of the cells. I'll make my gradient elliptical. You can change the center points in here by dragging back and forth. Now you may also want to add touch-ups to your halftone. For example, if I zoom in, you can see little blue dots here. Maybe you don't want those in there. I can add another pixel layer above my rectangle here. So I'll add a pixel layer. And if I select a brush and give it the color black, I can add to my mask. So I can just paint out those areas there. And here we have our final result, a halftone mask. If you want a full explanation of the blend options, be sure to check out my video on that topic. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.